Welcome. Today we've got Ezra Magnon uh, from California with us today. He recently signed with UC Davis to play D1 basketball in the Big West Conference. He's joining us to talk about his recruiting journey. Hey, Ezra, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Hey, first of all, congratulations. Got to feel good to kind of have the decision in the rearview mirror and have all that settled. Yes, sir. Definitely feels good. Sure. Uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself. What, what what does your bio look like? Um, I'm five ten point guard from Antioch, California. Um, I go to Heritage High School. I play AAU with Oakland Soldiers on the EYBL circuit. It's a Nike circuit. Uh, and I'm currently committed to UC Davis. Excellent. So obviously along the the path the recruiting trail you know there's highs and lows can you talk to a little bit uh about maybe some of the low points uh where things weren't going so well and then maybe some of the the high points where where some good things happen oh uh, yes sir it was definitely a roller coaster um at points at times um because there's a lot of um outside noise like people telling you where to go and stuff like that so you start to get stressed out about like if you want to please people or what school feels right. And um, it definitely gets stressful with like coaches calling you and always texting you and stuff like that. But uh, those are some of the lows, but the highs is definitely um, knowing that you're getting a chance to play college basketball. Like, and that's been my dream for my life. And uh, the recruiting process is knowing like coaches want me. That feels really good. And um, yeah, I'm very, I'm thankful for the recruiting process, but there's a lot of highs and lows definitely. For sure. So if we looked at your bio, what would be some of the accomplishments you've had on the uh, the athletic side? Um, well, I've gotten first team all league, uh, led my team to a, a North Coast section championship. Um, I got Bay Area player junior of the year last year, which is um, pretty big because the Bay Area is pretty big. But, um, yeah, those are a couple of accomplishments. I've Excellent. Gotten. What about on the academic side? Uh, where, where do you sit on the as far as accomplishments on that side? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, well, I've been th- uh, three point oh and above student my whole career, uh, my whole life. Uh, getting to awesome. high school, yeah, getting to high school, I struggled a little bit, and then I got back on track, getting like a three point five and around there. Excellent, great job, man. Yes, sir. So can as you walk through the recruiting process, can you tell me maybe two or three things that you did that were very important uh, in getting you uh, to where you are today? Uh, yes, sir. Um, first off, uh, definitely not sugarcoating anything when you're talking to coaches. If you really like the school, tell them that. Um, but always keep an open mind to all coaches, and that's probably that's probably one of the biggest things because you never know like until you go visit or – talk to the head coach and stuff like that. Um, yes, sir. And that's, that's probably the biggest thing to me. Keep an open so, mind. So when you first started, um, was UC Davis, was that on your horizon at all? Or did that, is that a school that kind of popped up later in the process? Yeah, it definitely popped up later in the process. Uh, I knew a lot about UC Davis. Um, like when I was growing up a little bit, I knew some about it, but, uh, yeah, I never really thought like I'd end up at UC Davis. That's not that wasn't like on my radar sure. at first. Okay, yes, sir, definitely. So going through the recruiting process, what, where, where can you pinpoint uh, maybe where you got a big break? Was it at a camp, or was it an email you sent, or was it hey a connection with a buddy you played with? Was there was there yeah. something that you can kind of point back to? You think was a was your big break, like breakout? Yeah, like what? What okay. something that you can look back to say, hey, yeah, that when I did that, that's when things really started happening. Um, I think when I first moved to California, that's when it started happening. And I, uh, I trained with um a, a guy named Packy Turner, um mm-hmm. Patrick Turner. Uh, well, he um he knows a lot of people. He got me in the gym playing against a lot of top recruits in the country and stuff like that, and I showed out pretty good. And that started that started to get my name out, and I think that's when I started to blow up a little bit. So when when you were going through the process, um, as you look back now, were there anything that uh, any mistakes that you made, or things you think, oh, I wish I could have done that a little bit different? Uh, that might have that might have turned things around. Uh, yes, sir. I think um, talking to coaches, uh, 
there was a lot of times where coaches like would call at bad times and stuff like that. But I think it's really important to always make time for like for the coaches because you never know. And there's like uh, and this is like your future. So you never know like what um, college you're going to end up at. So you should like keep an open mind with all coaches and always pick up when you can. I think that's the biggest thing because sometimes I'd be with my family and I, I'd, I'd see a call, but I couldn't pick it up. Well, I could pick it up, but I chose not to. And I'd call him back later and stuff like that. But I think it, sure. it's a better impression when you pick up at first and stuff like that. Sure. So as far as the recruiting process, obviously football and basketball starts a little bit earlier than some of the other sports. How, how early did the actual kind of recruiting process start for you? When, when did you feel like, hey, I can play at the next level and start getting some interest? Yeah. Um, well, in Ohio, where I moved from, sophomore year, I think is when – it started, uh, I think the first school that looked at me was University of Hartford. It was a D1 school in Connecticut. Uh, that's when I first started to think, like, yeah, I can do this at the next level. Pretty, Like, I can do this. I think I can play at the next level. Sure. Do you remember back in, in the recruiting process, what, what was the first thing you did? did? Did you shoot a video? Did you send emails to coaches? Did you just pick up the phone and call? What, what, was, your, what was some of the first things you did to kind of start the process? I definitely went to get footage out to coaches so they can see it, like the way I was playing. Cause that, that really, um, so, so like, um, when, uh, I already had a couple of videos on YouTube and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. I think co like coaches like to look at footage of the uh, players before they really start strongly recruiting them. So I just wanted to get more videos up there. And eventually like a lot of videos started going up of me on YouTube and stuff like that. But I think that's the most important thing I wanted to get out was the footage sure so in, in in your journey to uc davis were there other schools that you were considering and and if so did, did did you take visits and actually go on campus to different places um i took i took a i only took a couple of visits uc davis was one of my first visits like there i were going i was going to take a couple um unofficial visits and uc davis was my first and i just loved it but a couple other schools um, I went to a game up at Stanford versus Montana. Montana was recruiting me. Um, that was probably uh, – that was a little bit before my unofficial in, at UC Davis. But as soon as I went to UC Davis, I fell in love with the campus, and I knew I, I wanted to be there. So for students who are kind of maybe just starting out, they haven't went on a visit, can you kind of describe um, how, how they, like the, the timeline of how things rolled out so you yeah. – you, you kind of you you drove to the school. You flew in. You yeah. you know you met with the coach. Can you kind of walk us through that? Um, usually unofficials uh unofficials are um are pretty are pretty like planned out. Uh, there's probably there's probably going to be a schedule where you go by. Uh, mm -hmm. you drive up to the school. Well, I drove up to the school because UC Davis isn't too far from my house. So I drove up to the school. Um, we had lunch with the coaches, and then we met the players, talked to the players. Uh, watch the practice, um, went to go get something to eat and stuff like that. And I was with my family, so it was pretty good. My family got to see the campus and stuff. Excellent, excellent. Um, so how, how instrumental was your high school coach in, in the recruiting process? Did they play a big role? Uh, yes, sir. Well, my high school, it was a lot, uh, a lot to do with my AAU coach, but my high school coach did play a part in my um, – in my recruiting process, he was a big part. Uh, coach Cruzshank, he um he would talk to a lot of coaches. A lot of coaches would come in and watch my practices and stuff like that. He allowed it. He talked to the coaches about me, um, and he got to got a good relationship with a couple of the coaches that came to see me. So sure. did you good. have other guys on your high school that were getting recruited as well, or was it just you? Um, it was mainly me, but there's another a really good player. He's actually at Eastern Florida right now, but he was really good. He was getting recruited by a lot of schools too, but yeah, he ended up at Eastern Florida right now. You mentioned your, your travel coach. Uh, what, what kind of uh, advice or what kind of help does, did your AAU coach give you? Well, my AAU coach coached players like Stanley Johnson. Well, that was the AAU program I was in. So it was like Stanley Johnson, Ivan Rapp, a lot of NBA players, Aaron Gordon, LeBron. Uh, so he was telling me like, uh, there's going to be a lot of schools that that come on to you while, while we're going through the AAU process and stuff like that. 
um, he was just telling me to keep a level head, keep an open, um, keep uh, an open mind to all schools. And, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Don't let it get to your head. Don't stress too much about it and stuff like that. That's, that's what the coach, that's what my coach is telling me. So as you went through the recruiting process with the UC Davis coaches, did you, how did that work? Did you start talking with position coaches or the recruiting coordinator and, and yeah. the head coach? How did that progression work? Um, the first coach that talked to me was the um, assistant coach, Coach Volk. Um, he was a, he had a great impact on me the first time I talked to him. Uh, he talked to me about um, coming up to a camp, actually. It was a, a shooting camp that they were holding, and he wanted me to come up, check out the campus, and go to the camp. And I went to the camp and really liked it, met the head coach and all that. So it started off with the assistant coach, and then on your visit, were you able to talk some with the head coach there? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I talked to the head coach. Um, I talked to everybody that had to do with the um, basketball operations, all of that. Yep. So how did how did the actual scholarship offer uh, piece work? How, how did uh, when did that happen, and 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 how did that kind of roll out in your in your journey? Oh yeah. Um. Well, I was at um, Peach Gym, which is the EYBL Championships. It's the Nike Championships for AAU. Mm -hmm. Um. And then we just got done playing the number one player in the nation, James Wiseman. Yep. And then um, after the game, I had a pretty good game. I was scoring pretty good. I was playing good defense and stuff like that. Um, after the game, I knew I was going to get, like, some calls from coaches and stuff like that. I didn't know I was going to get the offer, but um, after the game, uh, the head coach texted me, like, right after. And he uh, just texted me and told me um, he wanted me to be an Aggie, and he wanted me to be his next point guard, and he wanted to offer me a scholarship. So tell me, how, how did that feel? Um, it felt really good because the coach um, – he he sees something in you. That's what it means. He sees something in you. He's um, invested in you, and he wants to offer you a scholarship, a lot of, of a lot of money, to um, for you to go to his school. So that means that he wants you a lot, and it's just a great feeling because you're wanted. Sure, sure. So tell me, uh, in your process, did you use like any recruiting services like NCSA, Recruit Me, mm -hmm. any of the online recruiting services to kind of get the word out or communicate with coaches? Mm. Um, when I was in, uh, I think, eighth grade, going into ninth grade, uh, I started to use NCSA a little bit, but um, I didn't I didn't use it so much towards like the ninth grade. Ten. When my recruiting really started to skyrocket, I wasn't really I wasn't using it. But sure. in yeah, eighth grade, ninth grade, I think I was, yeah I was using it pretty good. How old were you when you got the the actual scholarship? What year were you in when you got this when you got the offer? Um, I was seventeen. I was it was uh, in the summer of my senior. It was the summer of this year, I think. Summer of my okay. senior year. Yeah, great. So tell me a little bit about the, the videos. Uh, were other people posting videos? Did you make your own videos? Were they game videos? Mm -hmm. Did you do skills videos? H how did you handle that process to get video out in front of coaches? Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, the video started in sixth grade. Uh, the first video I made was made by me and my family. But after that, I, have, I had about like, there's like 10 other videos made of me. They're all made by like recruiting, um, by mixtape crews and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, people like that that record games and stuff. That's the people who are recording my games and and getting my uh, footage out there and putting it on YouTube and stuff. Excellent. Did you did you have like an online profile somewhere where coaches could kind of look and see kind of what your what your grades are, what your measurables yeah. were, that kind of stuff? Um. I'd say NCSA was probably where coaches would like that. That was my online profile. I also mm -hmm. had profiles on like 24 seven uh, sports. I think I ESPN, the recruiting profile, they don't have much, but they have like my basics ESPN and uh, rivals. I think. Yeah. Rivals. Okay. Those are the, yep. So talk about the communication process. Did you deal mostly with emails was there phone calls text there was there kind mm -hmm. of a progression there as you talked with the various coaches mm -hmm. um it was mostly uh i had a lot of emails from a lot of coaches like a lot of coaches 
I was getting like emails, but I'd really say the phone calls and the text messages is probably like the most important thing um, because it's like direct communication. So yeah, I was getting a lot of a lot of e- a lot a lot of emails, but I was also getting a lot of text messages and calls and stuff like that. Sure. How did you how did you feel about your knowledge level of the recruiting process? I mean, things were happening pretty young for you. Yeah. Did you feel like you had a handle on how it all worked, or was it a little bit of a mystery early on? I think early on is a little bit of a mystery because um, I was like the first person in my family to really go through this, like the recruiting process, like this. And me and my mom were new to it, but along the way, we got a lot of help from like other people who were uh, going through the process and stuff like that. And one of my good mentors, he went through the process as he was growing up. Uh, Khalil Dukes, he went to USC. Well, yeah, uh, so I talked to him. I talked to a lot of other people who played Division One basketball and stuff like that. A lot of my co- uh, AAU coaches coached a lot of Division One players and stuff. Hey, that's just some maturity to reach out to guys that have been there before or kind of yeah, learn, for sure. you know, for what they're doing. So talk to me a little bit about your uh, your your travel team and, and how, how, how big a role that played in, in your recruiting process. Um, I think the travel team was probably the most important um, in my recruitment process, I'd say. Definitely travel team. Um, because we'd go to tournaments all over the country. So you're like getting exposed to a whole like a whole other side of the country and stuff like that. And I think that was probably the biggest thing because I got college coaches texting me from like Texas, from Maine, stuff like that. Just different different um states so i think it helped me a lot so how, how did you keep everything organized you got emails coming in you've got coaches calling you texting you how mm-hmm. did you how did you keep it all keep it all straight because i know a lot of times man you you, you know it's hard to yeah. remember which coach went with which school and yes sir <laughs> how, how did you manage that um well at first i would just um I just put like the contact name and then I'd put coach and then I'd put either assistant coach or head coach and then the school that they went with. But as time went on, like a lot of coaches started reaching out. So I started to <laughs> write down yeah, So I started to write down in notes like which coaches, like Coach Vogue, Coach Les, UC Davis, stuff like that. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. So in, in the end, uh, how many schools were you? Were, were you did you, how many schools did, did, do you think you, talk to in the in the entire process and then how many did you whittle it down to there at the end um i'm not sure how many i talked to all together uh i think in the end though it was a lot but i think in the end like you start to see who's really invested in you and who's not so in the end it really came down to like two schools maybe three I'd say mm-hmm. it was UC Davis and then University of Montana was pretty was pretty um hardly recruiting me too, I think. So I'd say those two probably the top two. Okay. So tell me, uh, as as you get as you get it down to those final schools, how did you know that UC Davis was the right fit? Um, well, I I talked to my family a lot. I'm uh I have a great relationship with God. I prayed on it. Uh and I and I just thought um, what would be the uh, the best place where I would develop to get to where my um, ultimate goal is. And I thought UC Davis was because like the coach was an NBA player. Um, he's a great. He was one of the best shooters in the NBA. And that's probably what I need to work on the most. So that's what I. That's um, part of my decision. Like where I can grow the most. Okay. So what advice would you give to someone, uh, let's say you got a middle school kid who's pretty good, maybe freshman, sophomore, who's just kind mm-hmm. of starting this process. What kind of advice would you give them uh, in, the, in the recruiting, uh, on, on their recruiting journey? Yeah, um, always keep a level headed because there's probably going to be a lot of schools that come at you. Um, always keep a level headed. Don't get too up or too down. Don't get too stressed about any one school don't get too stressed um oh i think my biggest um what i'd say to them was is um don't let the outside talk get to you it's your decision um don't let other people kind of guide your decision it's your decision and yours alone excellent 
Um, do you have any recruiting stories that you want to share? Uh, maybe a funny story on a, on a trip that, that you went somewhere or a yeah. game or something a coach said that was interesting? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd say, let me think. I'd say in Las Vegas, I was with my family one time and I was texting one of the coaches from the University of Hawaii. Um, and I was, I was texting him and I, I, uh, wasn't paying attention to my phone and I, I think I texted something like I didn't mean to, and it was just a whole bunch of emojis, like <laughs> laughing faces and stuff like that. And I was like really embarrassed and, uh, yeah. And I was like telling my mom and my brother about it and they were like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I, that'd probably be, yeah, yeah that's probably the one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So tell me, um, is there anything or anything else in your recruiting process you think someone else should know about? Or, I mean, maybe a question I haven't asked that um, mm-hmm. you think would be beneficial. Man, like, hey, I wish, man, I wish someone would have told, told, told me that. Yeah. Um, I think I'd say when, when you first start to get those schools looking at you and you're, and you're like pretty comfortable about where you are don't be comfortable like always work as hard as you can at all times um don't be comfortable about where you are right now always strive to get better especially when colleges start talking to you you start to feel like okay i don't know if i have to do do more because i'm already there always do more always strive to be the best you can and work hard i'd say fantastic hey but i appreciate you spending some time with us thank you thank you for having me